All right, what's good, y'all? As you guys can tell, I've got some goodies here. Before I get into what's going on right here, if you look under the hood, you may notice there is no snail under there yet, and that's because I'm still waiting in line at the fabrication shop. But I did get the aluminum radiator installed, and I also got this TRD radiator cap. And I also got an NRG steering wheel installed. If you look here, I got all my gauges in. I got freaking AFR, I got boost, I got fuel pressure, oil pressure. And then I was like, I can't just do four because I'm gonna have two on the A pillar and then three sitting in the middle. So I was like, ah, I did a battery relocation. I'll go ahead and throw the bolt gauge in there as well. Um, I've got a sandwich plate for the oil filter so I can have a feed line to the turbo. And then also for the oil pressure gauge, uh, something that I can tap into and uh, read oil pressure. And then I also have Jim's fuel mod put together here. Look at that. Come on, man. Size comparison between the Jim's fuel mod filter, which I believe is off of a Celica, um, and the freaking Solar filter. Tiny. So first order of business is getting this universal gauge pod to fit on the A-pillar trim piece, which it already kind of does, sort of, kind of, but I'm gonna use some heat on it and you know make those borders just a little bit more flush. And then I'm gonna paint it because it looks kind of stupid <laughs> being black and then this is gray and it just uh, just makes the interior feel a little cheap, you know what I'm saying? All right, it's day three. I spent most of day two messing around with this gauge pod. You can see I kind of got a little carried away with the heat gun, but it's whatever, <clears throat> I might go and throw in another screw right there just to kind of keep it down. But for the most part, it doesn't look too bad. The paint didn't really match the way I wanted it to, but I still think it looks a lot better than the black did. All right, so it's been about an hour or two. I've got pretty much everything taken apart that I need to in the interior, I hope. I shouldn't need to do anything else. I got the A-pillar mounted. Um, it doesn't look horrible, but it's certainly not perfect. Uh, there's really not much I can say about it. I'm not 100% satisfied with it, but they're mounted and it's also hot in here. And I've been getting ate up by mosquitoes for the past however long. So maybe that's why I don't feel too good about it. But you know, it doesn't look horrible. It's mounted. Uh, it's a $15 universal pod. So yeah. Uh, I've got all the wiring and the vacuum line from the boost gauge uh, fed into the footwell here, and I'm gonna handle all that tomorrow. I just wanted to get the A-pillar mounted, that way I wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. I'm gonna start working on the pods in the middle, uh, and then I'm gonna sort out some wiring, and then worry about you know getting the grommet and the firewall for the fuel pressure and uh, the oil pressure. All right, here we are, it's the next day. I've been at it for about three hours this morning, give or take. Uh, an hour and a half of that was just me going around and getting parts and whatnot. Um, if you look in here, right by the steering column just above it, I got two grommets, or rather two holes drilled in the firewall with grommets for the wideband sensor, the fuel pressure sensor, and the oil pressure sensor. And the one on the left is the vacuum line for the boost gauge. So that worked out pretty good. It's really easy hole to drill. Like literally there's no wires back there. You can kind of go in blind. You will end up drilling through the little, I guess like carpet mesh thing or whatever that they got um, padding the firewall from the interior. But that's like no big deal at all. So now that I have the vacuum line and the AFR harnesses ran through the firewall, I took the freaking power wires for both of them. Uh, kind of set them off to the side along with this magical switch right here that uh, does something else but um i have one pod put down like it's already you can see the screws on there so it's in there and you can see in there they're secure so that middle pod ain't going nowhere then i have the other two pods on the left and right side kind of mocked up i'm going to go back and do a little bit of measuring that way i get them straight because if i get them all crooked and they're like different links from in between each other it's going to drive me insane so i want to do this right the first time all right, so I got the pods mounted and they are pretty close. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the actual gauges and then start running wiring. All right, I've got the wires ran. I think it looks pretty good. This is the look I was going for. 
um, instead of having like, you know, the three pod housing or whatever sit on the center of the dash, uh, I kind of wanted to, I guess, expose the wires coming out the back of the pods. I don't know, it makes it feel like, it's kind of hard to explain, but this is the look that I've been chasing. Um, so yeah, now I'm just going to figure out how I'm gonna get the center console back on and have it clear the wires so I'm not pinching them. And then I'll pretty much be buttoning everything up back in the interior. Uh, minus, you know, under here, the kick panel or whatever, um, so I can wire everything up. And then we're going to go under the hood, do Jim's fuel mod, and install the sandwich plate and test everything out. So when you turn the car on, or rather you put on ignition, gauges all turn on, which I'll go over the AFR here in a second. When you turn the headlights on, the gauge is dim, which you can, you can hardly tell, but there it is. So the headlights go on, the gauge is dim. I got a switch that cuts the LEDs on the gauges and just leaves the needles and of course the AFR will still be on. Now once I get under the hood, I'll go over the AFR um, and why it's just going to be powered, but it's not going to be functional just yet. All right, it's the next morning. You can see in the interior I've got the set up. It's pretty dope. I put the interior back together after uh, I finished recording yesterday, but my phone was like dying, so I decided not to like record anything. You see all like the electrical crap on the ground. I gotta vacuum everything out when I'm done. But yeah, everything's set up. So now it's time to get busy under the hood. Now it looks like chaos right now, but it's, believe it or not, it's organized chaos. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on removing the factory oil filter, oil filter, the factory fuel filter down here, uh, as well as everything in between all the way up to the fuel rails. Now I've been told that this fuel filter is like extremely difficult to get off. Uh, we're about to see today. All right, I don't know if I said that um, I thought that the filter was going to be easy, but if I did, uh, this car just proved me wrong. But I did get that filter off. Oh my God. So I'm going to tell you guys how I got the filter off, um, which way worked best for me. I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't have a line wrench, just don't even try it because you will round out that freaking fitting on the bottom. All right, you need to use that uh, that freaking line wrench. Also grab a, well, I grabbed a 19, all right? And that's for the hex fitting, or rather the hex housing on the bottom of the filter. This is a new filter, but I'm not gonna use it. I actually bought this filter like two years ago, talking about, oh, I'm gonna replace my fuel filter, and I just never got to it. Well, I mean, I guess we're doing it now. Anyways. What I did, I used a tin uh, to knock off these two little freaking bolts right here. <laughs> and uh, there's an eight mil that clamps down the filter into the housing. I removed this completely. So it was free floating in the car, right? I threw the freaking 14 uh, on the actual fitting itself on the line and then the 19 around the housing. And I held the 14 in place and spun the housing around because that thing was stuck. So the next order of business is replacing this filter with the bigger fuel filter from the Celica. Now I do have an Earl's fitting. It's an AN adapter on top. And it's just gonna go right back where the factory filter was sitting. Okay, after getting creative with uh, mounting that filter, I decided that I'm not going to show. Uh, that way there's no record of how ghetto that was. Um, how I mounted it, but just know that the stock fuel line screws right into it. This is the fuel line set up for the mod. It's really simple. There's a fitting here, a 45 here, a T fitting here with the swivel uh, on this end, and then there's a fitting here, it's a fitting here, and then this is extra. So, I mean, if you want to run a fuel pressure uh, sensor or a gauge right there, you can, but like I said, super simple. Then you're just going to replace the, um, the fittings on the fuel rails. All right, so I'm gonna have to show the freaking filter because I am doing all this wiring and a lot of it is gonna be right by the filter. So let's freaking get it out the way. Look at it, it's ghetto, haha. -ha. But it's secure. That's all that freaking matters. It's freaking secure, so shut up. That'll do for now until I figure something out but I am doing some wire cleanup. I uh, got that harness from the firewall running back through here. 
Now, while I'm here, this right here is the um, harness for the wideband sensor, which I'm gonna leave unplugged. I'm not gonna put the sensor on the car just yet, not until uh, everything's fabbed up and um, I got an ECU to actually read it. But the harness will be able to reach uh, wherever the wideband sensor will go in this general area. So that's why uh, I'm just gonna have the power and ground to that gauge and I'm just gonna wait. Now, some might be questioning the location of the fuel pressure sensor, but the reason I put it so close to the T-fitting is because I wanna read pressure as close to the fuel lines as possible, or not fuel lines, but the fuel rails. I wanna read them as close to the fuel rails as possible because they're not return style rails. It is a deadhead system, or rather a uh, returnless system that I will be converting to a return style with a fuel pressure regulator. But since, you know, the fuel isn't gonna loop around and you know, return out of that line. Since it's all just going there, I put that sensor there so I can monitor the fuel pressure, make sure, uh, you know, everything's doing its job. Oh, well, would you look at that? I cut the tails off of the metal zip ties and now the fuel filter doesn't look as ghetto. All right, I've got some organized chaos going on with the uh, factory wiring harness alongside the new gauge harness. Doesn't look too horrible. I do say so myself. All right, I've got everything hooked up minus the vacuum line from here to the actual vacuum manifold. I got to replace it because it cracked, but that's a whole different story. Um, I put some pressure on the fuel system. There's no leaks, so that's good. I also temporarily disconnected this vacuum line, hooked up the vacuum line for the boost gauge. So we're gonna go check and see if the boost gauge is actually reading vacuum. And the connection for the boost gauge is good. Yes, sir. So now I'm about to go get in the zone, get some oil uh, and a new filter. It's due for an oil change anyway. And we're gonna go ahead and start taking care of the oil pressure gauges circuit. So let's go ahead and get started on that. And while it's still fresh on my mind, I uh, just wanted to let everyone know that the AutoZone people know my name. <laughs> and one of them knows my phone number. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but just thought I'd throw that out there. All right, I got the sandwich plate installed. I'm just gonna tighten down the pressure sensor, clean up around the area, because uh, all 1MZ owners know just how messy uh, oil changes get. <laughs> it's this wonderful placement of the filter, but it's on. All right, got the wire ran. It's filled up with oil. Let's uh, let's go ahead and give it a start. Okay, so I ran it. Nothing's leaking. Probably gonna take it on a test drive tomorrow. See how it does. everything installed for about two days now not making any fuel or oil which you can't really see but everything's looking good I think overall this job went really well I definitely am gonna relocate where I get my boost reference from for the gauge because uh, it doesn't read vacuum like perfectly you know what I'm saying I think it's because uh, you know it's tying in with the whole vacuum manifold there so what I'll end up doing is I'll probably uh, tap into the actual intake plenum and uh, read vacuum from there. That way I get an accurate boost reading whenever it's time for the turbo to go on. I don't know if I ever showed the ceramic coating, but man, this thing is like glass. We weren't able to get all the scratches out, but we got quite a few of them out. This thing looks real good. See the interior, bro. This looks good, man. If I do say so myself. Overall, I'm really satisfied with how everything turned out. Really, all I gotta do now is just get some better seats, but I still like these seats. It's not like I don't like them. But yeah, man, this looks good. And I mean, for the most part, everything's working like it should. Everything seems to be reading accurate. Oil pressure is working, fuel pressure is good. I haven't lost any fuel pressure while driving, so I don't got any leaks or any problems with the pump yet. <laughs> We're gonna see. Alternator's doing its job, full gauge is working. 
and boost gauge is almost there. Like I said, I gotta find a better spot to uh, read vacuum, but once I get the wide band hooked up, yes sir, it's gonna be complete. And uh, now we're just waiting on the fabrication place. Should happen here within the next uh, two weeks, maybe three. I'm in line though, so that's all that matters. But uh, after we do that, literally it's just uh, getting some engine management work done and then this thing will be ready to hit the streets. So I appreciate you guys checking in. See you guys in the next video. Hopefully the next video is me dropping this thing off or picking it up uh, from getting the turbo fabbed up. So let's hope for that.